Validation in any application can get really tricky, but within Laravel, it is really simple to do this. So in this part, we're going to look at submitting this form. We're going to fix up the cross-site request forgery error. We're going to add validation. And if a user doesn't fill this in, or if it doesn't meet any of the other requirements that we're going to set, we're going to redirect back and we're going to show an error message. Now in the intermediate version of this series, we're going to look at actually adding the message under here, but for now we're going to keep things simple and just create a list of errors at the top. So to get started, then we need to fix up our cross site request forgery error. And all this involves is adding in a token in our form, which will mean that we know the user who is submitting this form is that user. Now, if you need more information about cross site request forgery, we have a course on that uh, under the PHP security series. So go ahead and check that out either now or later. So the first thing we want to do then is update our form. So to do this within the form, within Laravel, we can use the cross site request forgery field function. Now we can also use the cross site request forgery token. If we just take a look at this, you can see that gives us out a token, but of course that would involve placing this into a field ourselves. We can use this helper to actually create that for us. And you can view the page source just here and you will see that's created an, a hidden input type with the name of underscore token and a value. So Laravel has the concept of middleware, which will allow you to uh, set things up to be checked before you actually hit your application. And in this case, we do actually have cross site request forgery middleware. And now under HTTP and middleware, you can see verify cross site request forgery token. And this extends the base verifier, which will uh, just verify everything. You can go ahead and take a look at that if you want to. Either way, now what's going to happen is we know that we're submitting this through to our task root. We know that the method is post and therefore this method here will be picked up. So we can just return works just to see if this works. Come over, submit the form and there we go. So this is how we're going to be creating our task. But we first want to deal with validation, which is the whole point of this part. So how do we do this? Well, there are a couple of ways to do this, but since we're in roots, we're going to uh, create a validator instance, passing in all of our rules, passing in all of our data, and then we will check how to see if this has failed. So I'm going to start by creating a validator instance like so, and this is just validator we use a static make method. And then into this, we pass in all of our request data here and then all of our rules just here. Now we don't have any of our request data. So I'm just going to comment this out and we're going to look at how we get this. Now by request data, I mean anything that's uh, given to this request. So to do this, we type in request and we just call this whatever we want. Now, if we do a die and dump on request, which will just kill the page and dump the contents of this, we'll see that when we type something in here, like learn Laravel, and we hit add task, we get this request just here. So in actual fact, we just need to import this at the top. So Laravel's request is under illuminate HTTP and request. If we head over and refresh again, you can see that we now get all of this data. So what we're essentially after then is something like request parameters. You can see that we get the token through there and we also get the name in. And from this, what we can do is we can say something like request name, and this will give us the value we've passed in. So it's a lot easier than using uh, the PHP super global for post or get or anything like that. So with our validator, then we obviously need to take in all of our request data. So we can say something like request all which will part, give us all of the data we've submitted through the form and now we want to create our rules and we do this within an array so we only have one field here but of course if you had more you could enter more rules in here in this case we're going to say name we're going to say this is required we're going to separate each of our rules by a pipe symbol and we're going to say that we want this to be a max of 255. Now, the reason for that is that when we created our vi migration, uh, this created a length of 255. So it would truncate if it was any longer. So it's a good idea to include these anyway. So let's do a die dump on validator and let's just see what this gives us. So let's just refresh again. And there we go. And you can see that this just allows us to uh, basically, well, we have all of our data in here. Uh, we have uh, some methods on our validator as well, which will allow us to check if this failed or not. 
So we want to then actually check if this failed or not. So to do this, we can use the fails method on our new validator instance. So we just say if validator fails, we want to do something in here. Now, otherwise down here, we want to create our task, which we'll be looking at in the next part. So if our validation does fail, what do we do? Well, we want to return. We always do this within a controller method or a root. We want to redirect somewhere. So we could do this to the just the home page. We want to redirect with input. So with any previous input that we've given, we want to redirect with errors and the errors that we want to give are just the validator instance and Laravel is clever enough to then uh, allow us to loop through these errors. So we're going to fail this. We're going to take a look at what happens and then we're going to output our errors. So let's just refresh again. And if we go and add a task here, you can see that we're redirected back. Whereas if I type in something and hit add task, we get a blank page because this, uh, at this point is hitting just down here. So we need to work out how we actually display our errors then. So to do this, we're going to do this just above the form and we're going to do this in a partial. So this is going to be a new view, but we're going to include this from in here. So within views, we're going to create a new folder called common. And inside of this, we're going to create a new file called errors.blade.php. So I'm just going to type in errors, head over to the index page, and I'm going to include common dot errors because it's likely that we'll have another form somewhere else within our application and in that case we can just include this in so let's just refresh and we will see if we just go back a page that we have that errors just up there now obviously what we want to do is only display errors if there are errors which makes complete sense but how do we even check in fact how do we even get our errors well, we have a variable that's passed to every view called errors. Now this will either be uh, no errors at all, or it will have errors. So to check, we can use an if statement within blade. So this is just the syntax for an if statement and we end the if just like that. And in here we can do a count on the errors and we want to make sure that's greater than zero. So we're gonna say has errors and this is just enough now to check that this works. I'm going to refresh the page and hit add task and we see has errors. Now, if I type in something valid like learn Laravel, we see nothing. We go through to that route again. So now we can actually start to loop through the errors that we have. So again, I'm going to use bootstrap styling. I'm going to create a div with a class of alert and this will be alert danger. This will just create a red box and I'm going to create an unordered list. And now for each of them errors, so we use a for each within Laravel, we're going to say for each errors all because we want to grab all of the errors for each loop we're going to call that error and we can end our for each just down there and inside of here we just create a list item and this will just output a unordered list of our errors so we can just write error just in there and that is it so now we can go and hit add task we see we get a list of errors perfect if we were to type in something really long here so let's just type a load of rubbish and we'll go and paste it all in, hit add task, and there we go. So the name must not be greater than 25, uh, 255 characters. We're never gonna see both of these errors because uh, we have filled it in if it's greater than 255. So hopefully that makes sense. So now that we've done validation, we need to move on to adding a task. And of course that comes after our validation just here, and it becomes what we do after this, as long as this hasn't failed because at this point we're returning, so we're never gonna reach this point. So let's go over to the next part then and look at creating our tasks in our database, which is really straightforward.